Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Today I'm sharing how we transformed our ugly granite countertops for $100. And we did it with contact paper. If you're thinking what I was thinking, yes, I was definitely worried about the durability of the contact paper. So we actually did test it before applying it. But just to show you guys how good the tests held up, we recorded a few clips doing heat testing and stain testing to show you guys. I'll be sharing that at the end of the video. So in case you're wondering why we didn't decide to go with epoxy countertops, that's because we've actually tried this before. We made a slab for our bathroom and it turned out beautiful at first, but over time the epoxy yellowed so bad. It literally right now looks like I painted the countertop like a light yellow color against my white wall. But that's not even the worst. The worst part is that leaving like a Listerine bottle or something or like a sticky note that's pink will stain the countertop so easy. We also tried painting our countertops with Rust-Oleum enamel and this held up literally the worst. It chipped everywhere and it stained so bad and that's when we actually decided to remove that paint before I applied this vinyl contact paper as a temporary solution until we could afford something more permanent. If you missed it, we've been sharing our kitchen transformation on a budget. In the last few videos, I shared that we made our own DIY tiles from concrete and then how we installed our backsplash. I also share how we refinished our kitchen cabinets with some paint to look like real wood. We got this contact paper on Amazon. I'll be adding links for everything we used in the comments pinned to the top. I'll also be sharing this on my blog with photos and printable instructions if needed. So I say this in all my videos, but if you've been following me, you probably already know that I like to share our fails as well as the things that did work for us. So I'll be sharing all of our mistakes throughout the video. To prep my counters for the contact paper, I started off by um, cleaning them with some soapy water. I then wiped them down and sprayed them with 409 to remove any oils. I used a knife to scrape away any buildup on the counter as well. I also did the edges and made sure I scraped off underneath. Then I wiped it all down with a clean wet rag going over it a few times. And once it was dry, I finished it off with some acetone to completely degrease the surface and it was ready for the contact paper. I first attached the contact paper to the edges and rolled it out to measure the length I needed. I then cut it down to size. I also cut the top half because it was too tall and I knew I would be using this for the backsplash portion of the countertop. Next, I rolled it back onto the leftover contact paper roll face side in and started slowly applying it onto the countertop. This is where things started going wrong already. I watched a video where a girl showed that going up the wall a little bit is a good idea just in case it starts like applying offset or something so there's like no gaps. This worked for the smaller counter I had however for this long table it started crawling up the wall way too much and with one person holding it as you're applying it this was almost impossible. So I didn't get this on video but we actually removed it and I got Tony to help and we decided to apply it simply by trying to keep it as close to the wall as possible when you're rolling it out. We use this plastic spreader to apply the contact paper and we found that it actually worked best if you slowly unroll the contact paper. Having it rolled up like this was so convenient because I would just pull the backing away. But the most important part was holding it up while Tony was applying it. And he used the spreader to work in one inch sections. If you don't hold it up, there's a chance of it getting stuck to the table and it's super hard to like rip off because this contact paper has super strong glue on it. So just this table, this side took us about 40 minutes to complete. I think it's like a 10 foot countertop. So not applying it on the wall made the process so much easier. It was actually really easy to control how close you wanted it to the wall by simply moving it closer or further. I don't know why we were overthinking this in the first place. Once we were getting towards the end, I had too much of that backing leftover paper, so I actually cut it off so it's not in my way. So if you're like me and you accidentally have to remove a section, it is incredibly hard to remove this contact paper. And it will likely rip because we've done that once. We had to remove it twice the first time we ripped. The second time we learned that it takes a lot of effort. Me and Tony both were like putting on even pressure while removing it and it somehow worked. But here's how it looks if you remove it. It still collected a ton of dirt even though I scrubbed the counters and 
it has a ton of ripples on it. We had no choice but to use this piece, so we tried to salvage it, and it actually worked. We used a fan to blow dry it and kind of warm up the contact paper so that the ripples hopefully went away. They did slightly go away, but we just used the spreader to smooth it onto the table, and here's how it turned out. I'm definitely impressed with this. I was not expecting it to look half decent at all, so I'm glad we could save it. Okay, on to the corners. So these seemed like it took forever to do. I think each corner took about 40 minutes as well. So if you're planning on doing this and you want it to look perfect, I would suggest doing it over the weekend so you at least have a couple of days, not like a one day job for sure. To do the corners, we just applied consistent heat in the whole area that needed to be stretched and then I would slowly stretch it. I'm not using a heat gun because I tried a heat gun on my test run and the heat gun heats up the contact paper too much and then you end up ripping it. That's why we ended up going with a blow dryer because the heat is not as hot and it's easier to control the amount of heat that comes out. These corners definitely took a ton of patience but they look so beautiful once you've stretched them on. I first did one side on each corner then I moved on to the next. It helps if somebody's actually holding the blow dryer instead of you having to like put it down each time. I tried it that way and it actually doesn't work because the contact paper cools off so fast. So to finish off the rest of the edges, we also heated up anywhere where the edges were and then smoothed them over with the spreader. And to finish it off, I simply used a razor to remove any excess from the bottom. Keep in mind not to cut too close to the edges because you need extra tape for it to actually stay attached. I cut it too close in some areas and it keeps pulling up every couple of days so I need to like tape it extra. For the other side of the kitchen, Tony decided to remove the sink for easier application and I'm so glad that he did. Another thing to keep in mind is to buy one big roll, have extra rather than having to buy two separate rolls because mine came in two different shades. So I had to do quite a bit of patchwork. I wish I would have just bought one big roll, but my mistake and I'm sure I won't be doing that again if I ever have to redo this. Even though some of these areas were patched up, they are actually holding up super well. We're really impressed with the durability of this contact paper. For this inner corner, I actually called Tony for help. Uh, we did one slit and tried to stretch it out with heat and kind of get it to fit. This almost worked. I actually wish we made more slits because I feel like we were just stretching it too much with that one slit. So I did have to patch it eventually with a small piece. So you can't really see it from far away. You, you do see it if you're like really close. This project took me about three days to finish. It definitely makes a night and day difference if somebody is holding up the contact paper for you while you are spreading it on. Holding it up actually eliminates any bubbles. I tried holding it myself while spreading it on and I'd get too distracted and create bubbles. So it's definitely a two person job. The nice thing is that the backsplash walls were super easy to apply. I simply removed the backing and applied it with the spreader. And then I used the heat gun for any corners or edges. Even though these areas seem like they had a big seam right here, this gap got covered really nicely with the white silicone. So if you have a little gap, it's okay. <laughs> so to finish these corners on the backsplash, I pinched the edges going up and then I used the razor to cut down where I had folded. I then trimmed and folded this section in. I used a heat gun to heat up the rest before I folded the edges down and secured them with a spreader. And here's how these edges turned out. They actually look a lot cleaner than I was expecting even though there's a cut in there. Honestly, if you don't come up and you're like looking super close, you can't tell at all that this is contact paper. Okay, let's show you guys why the testing convinced us to use this contact paper. I have the contact paper applied over a wooden cutting board for this test. For our first test, we fried an egg and left the hot frying pan on there for a minute. You can see it left a melted ring on the surface. I wiped it off with a damp cloth and turns out that most of it was actually dirt. We then left a pot of boiling water on it for a minute and it did almost nothing. I noticed a slight change in texture on the contact paper. Next, for our stain testing, I mixed some turmeric in boiling water and spilt it on the surface. I also shredded some carrots and left both on there for a few minutes. 
It definitely left some scary looking stains. At first, it seemed like there was no hope. Um, I went over it with a damp sponge and it wasn't removing much. So I then used some soapy water and it removed quite a bit, but still left a pretty visible stain. So I pulled out my magic eraser and went over the areas for about 30 seconds and voila! The stains are completely gone. Uh, here I took the cutting board outside with better lighting to show you how the frying pan left the melted ring in this area. You can also see the turmeric stained the melted area a bit but other than that super durable stuff and it has been holding up so good. Over the past two months the only damage we've gotten so far is from our silverware caddy on the shelf above. We had a few forks or spoons fall down and create tiny holes. So from now on, we've decided to leave the caddy on the table to avoid this, but the scabs that it made are so small that you can barely see them and it actually doesn't affect the rest of the table at all. It hasn't been like collecting water underneath or anything like that at all. I like to keep a few cutting boards on the table just in case I need to set something hot on it, but the glass surface on my stovetop and the sink are areas I've gotten used to using for hot stuff over the years, so I feel like not much has changed for us. Here's some photos of the granite countertops before and then how the marble looks after. The white marble definitely brightened up the kitchen so much. I can't tell you guys how annoying it was to wipe the surface and not see that it was actually clean with the dark granite before. I just felt like the kitchen was always dirty even if I cleaned it. With the white countertops, I feel like once you clean it, it actually feels clean and looks so light and airy. I also love that this is renter friendly, so if we ever miss the ugly orange granite underneath the contact paper or it starts wearing off, we can replace it or remove it. I'm hoping with how good it's holding up so far that we could get at least a few years out of it. And that's it for this video. Uh, I hope you found it helpful. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see my videos. I'll see you guys all next time. Bye.